Hi, everyone, and welcome to Julia Hub 101, an introduction to cloud, code to cloud platform for high performance computing. I'm Misha St. Amand. I'm the head of marketing for Julia Computing. Today, Jacob Viverka will be introducing you to Julia Hub. As the webinar title says, is the code to cloud platform for high performance computing and the Julia and the IDE for the Julia programming language. A little background on our speakers today. Jacob spent six years building applications and services for simulation and modeling workflows. He's now part of Julia Computing's team that helps introduce customers to the latest scientific machine learning techniques for industrial simulation and modeling. We also have Matt Bauman here. Matt is the Director of Sales Engineering at Julia Computing and his team, including Jacob, help not only introduce the company's products, but they also help onboard and train new customers. He's going to be sharing insights and helping answer questions during the webinar. Um, Matt holds a doctorate from the University of Pittsburgh as well. Before I turn things over to Jacob, I wanted to run through a quick overview of Julia Computing. Jacob, if you're willing to, perfect. Um, as you can see, the foundation of our company is the Julia programming language and the community behind it. Uh, the four co-founders of Julia, plus a few other folks who were Julia fans, joined together to found Julia Computing. Um, today, Jacob will be introducing you to that middle piece, Julia Hub, the platform for Julia develop, development. But as you can see, Julia Computing has many additional products that run on Julia Hub um, that cover pharma, physical simulation, circuit simulation, and more. So I'm going to turn things over now, and I thank you so much for joining. Thank you for that, Misha. So yeah, just as she said, we, we spent a lot of time talking about our products, which are all built on top of Julia Hub. Uh, today, however, we're gonna give Julia Hub its due and talk a little bit about just the foundational piece that forms this, this uh, platform with all these amazing products. So let's get into it. So Julia Hub is an enterprise cloud computing platform for distributed cost-effective and reproducible computing and it's optimized for Julia. So what does all this mean? It is a place where you can build, uh, you can build code, you can collaborate with others, you can share your projects, and you can even develop uh, end user applications all from within here. So we're gonna be taking a look at each of these pieces um, to do so. I am gonna have some code to share, but uh, the focus isn't really what that code does. Um, it's more about how we're going to use each of these different uh, building blocks of Julia Hub to envision how we can build out uh, larger, larger projects and packages. So we're going to see how Pluto can help us uh, build and collaborate uh, and run notebooks. So how we can um, take some ideas and concepts and really quickly get those into code and get those in, in the hands of other people uh, so they can actually uh, see what we're envisioning, what we're trying to accomplish, and uh, give us some, some proper feedback. Uh, from there, we're going to look at how we can develop Julia code on the platform with a browser-based IDE and VS, VS code. So VS code is the preferred IDE for Julia users, especially since uh, the Atom project is sunsetted. Really, um, VS code offers an unparalleled uh, IDE. Uh, experience for Julia developers. So it's great to, um, you know, index your project, uh, debug, debug your code, um, all those great things. And then Julia Hub offers an extension for the VS Code um, IDE, which is going to allow you to um, scale up your, your projects. And we'll take a look at that as well. Um, so we're also going to see how we can create and share packages and uh, PKG, the Julia package manager, which is built in, is really first class. And there's a lot of great open source tooling that goes into uh, helping people make some high quality packages that you can create to share with uh, the general open source community or uh, amongst your team as well. And then um, lastly, we're going to take a look at how we can scale these jobs. And you can do this to um, really there, there is no limit to this. There's, you, you can scale to any number of cores, any architecture. Um, it, it's, it's very easy to do on Julia Hub and the Julia language itself lends, its, it lends itself to uh, 
do this with really minimal changes in the code, sometimes none at all. Uh, so that's a really, really nice feature. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, lower the technical bar so you can just really get to solving your problem. And uh, there are three tiers of Julia Hub. So we have individual, team, and enterprise. And what we're going to look at today is uh, really common among all three. So you just kind of look at the top. We have uh, workspace and notebooks. Um, so it's Pluto notebooks we're going to be taking a look at today. Uh, data pipeline, we're not going not to delve too much into, but we have some really nice facilities for uh, working with data sets, sharing those across team members, um, and integrating them in the platform. And then we're going to see how to run jobs uh, in batch, uh, set up a cluster and submit a job. Uh, and then we're going to touch a little bit on uh, private package registries and uh, how we can actually register jobs on Julia Hub. And that's going to allow, especially if you're on a team or an enterprise tier, allow you to uh, share code uh, amongst yourselves that maybe doesn't belong in that uh, general open source package registry. Uh, so we can return here if we have more questions in the end, but for now, uh, just kind of be aware of these tiers and we'll get into the capabilities. So the goals for what we're going to discuss, we're gonna talk about how we can develop applications with the browser-based IDE. So we're gonna take a look at uh, what that looks like exactly, um, how we're gonna also leverage compute from that uh, browser-based IDE um, to submit jobs and a varying number of uh, compute resources and architectures. And we're also gonna look at how we can collaborate better. So not just developing the code, but uh, interworking with a team or with other collaborators on Julia Hub, what facilities we provide that really we think um, tells a powerful story on how you can get those ideas into code and, and into use as fast as possible. Um, and hopefully by the end of all this, we're gonna give you everything you need to get started on what we truly believe is the best platform for Julia development. Um, and if we just look right there below the logo, it's um, Julia Hub is always aiming to be the simplest way to get started with this fantastic language. It's proven itself to be the fastest scientific, mathematical, statistical, computational language yet. So um, it's got a strong following and I think it's for good reason. I think that Julia Hub really trying to just uh, pave, a, pave a way for as many people to uh, make use of this language and start building some great tools. So that's the, that's the goal here. Hopefully you leave uh, with a, um, a call to action and a sense like you can get started. So first with compute, um, we're gonna look at how we can develop and uh, compute from the browser-based IDE, how we can quickly and easily scale our Julia jobs to leverage those varying, uh, those varying compute resources on, on different architectures. So before I go uh, with a little interactive de uh, demo, I'm just gonna prepare you for what we're gonna see. So the image that you're seeing uh, probably looks a lot like uh, the sidebar for Visual Studio Codes because it is. And we have the Julia Hub extension right there. So whenever you're working on a file, this is all it takes to submit that job to a cluster and run it in, uh, in a distributed fashion. So there's no shell scripting, no networking, no infrastructure set up from the IT team that, that is required. You can just take that code that you're working with interactively and submit it um, by filling out these couple fields. So first we are going to declare the main Julia file that we want to submit. Uh, we're gonna specify a bundle directory if, um, if that's applicable. So um, if there's a project file or any other um, you know, data dependencies that we need to submit this main job with, we'll configure the compute resources. So for instance, we can run this on a single process uh, that's a GPU architecture that has two virtual CPUs and uh, each with four uh, gig of mem. And we can also set some limits if we want to. We can say, uh, do not run this longer than two hours or longer than two dollars or what have you. Um, so that's the that's the limit. And then we can specify the job type for us to be Julia, and then we can give it a name. And then we're just ready to start that job. So again, um, no need for delving into configuration files. It's all done through the extension. 
And so with that, I'd like to take you to Julia Hub. So this is this is the homepage that you'll find. And if we uh, look here, we have some different applications. So this Julia IDE is the browser-based IDE that we've been we've been speaking of. And in order to start one of these, uh, you can launch a new instance. So if I click this, I can declare what compute resource I want to use for this application to run on. So if I want it to run on a CPU or GPU, I can decide that. If I want it to run with a certain number of uh, vCPUs and a certain amount of memory per each one, I can decide that. Um, I can set a, a limit for this application, just like uh, I spoke about with batch jobs. Um, and then I can also decide if I want to only allow my account or allow other logged in users. Um, so we'll look at that a little bit more um, as we go on. It's going to be important when we look at Pluto Notebooks. But for now, I already have one running. So when you click Connect, you'll hop out to what looks like uh, Visual Studio Code. And in here, I have um, I have my package that I created, the Julia Hub 101 package. And this is going to function just like uh, when you're look, working locally on VS Code. And so I can, I can actually execute lines of code right here interactively. And I can see that now uh, this REPL knows about this new function, greet. And if I execute it, it gives me the expected response. Uh, if I look for the documentation for this function, uh, I have it available because I have written it here. Um, so this is part of what I was talking about, those, those package tools that make it really nice to write uh, Julia packages. And um, so I have this, this um, source uh, file, which defines my, my logic for my package. And then I also have this uh, batch script where I am going to load in my package and um, do some different things here where I call my functions and I generate a couple of uh, a couple of plots and I save those results. So without delving too deep into this, I just wanna I wanna jump straight over to the Julia Hub extension where I can choose which script I want to submit. So I'll use this current file. It already knows what bundle I'd like to submit with uh, just by the context of where that file lives. Um, I'll run this on a single process instead of distributed uh, CPU with uh, two, two CPU and four gig uh, memory. And then I will just name this and start the job. And so, what we're trying to, uh, what, we're tr what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that I can work with this code interactively as I'm building it out. And then when I reach a limit where, um, even though I was able to configure this job to use the number of CPUs and memory that I, I thought would be appropriate, um, some jobs just won't work very well on one machine. So we can see here, this job is successfully submitted. Um, so that's good. We'll check on it in a little bit. For now, uh, we can see it right here. Um, so when you're ready to scale up these jobs, this Julia Hub extension is right here, ready, um, waiting for you to, to scale up that job to, uh, variable amounts of machine, a number of machines with, with, uh, different amounts of compute, right? So, um, it's a great way to, um, kind of get started and get to get some ideas into code. And then when you approach that problem that does require cloud compute. Um, we make that just as easy as we can here. So um, with that, let's uh, let's go back over to Julia Hub and let's take a look at our jobs. Um, in here, I can see that uh, this is the job I just submitted, and it's still in in progress. That's what the 
Uh, that's what this icon means. It means it's running. But uh, I did just submit one uh, not too long ago. So let's go ahead and just take a look at that. It's this exact same file. If I click on results, then I will see the uh, plot that I expect to see. And um, this can be a single file. This can be a zip file with many different results. But um, the, the real takeaway being that I was able to um, use that same script, which uh, I can run interactively. So if I do so now, we're going to see that I can I can run this interactive and I can also run uh, in batch and uh, produce the same results, but I didn't have to change my code. I didn't have to set up any, uh, you know, new configurations. Um, didn't have to write any shell or anything like that to, to get it queued, get it running, uh, you know, dedicate my, my compute resource that I want uh, and so forth. So there we see the, the exact same plot. Um, so yeah, so this is, what it looks like from the uh, browser-based IDE. And if I just switch back over real quick, um, that's telling one part of the story. So I want to, I want to kind of transition because um, compute is very important to a cloud platform. So now that we have that covered, let's talk about collaboration and how we're trying to always make it uh, as simple as possible to collaborate with ease on Julia Hub. And we feel that's important because uh, the Julia language is um, very good at expressing ideas. If you come from a mathematics background, if you don't come from a, a deep computer science background, um, or even if you do and you're really good at writing performant uh, Julia code, you can express ideas in code very quickly. Uh, however, sometimes it's uh, good. You need to communicate with other people who don't have that background or don't know Julia or uh, are getting onboarded onto your team. So having different ways to share these ideas and these concepts is really important. Um, we're gonna look at a couple different ways to do it uh, here in the slides and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you to take a look at it interactively. So first, uh, let's just kind of high level overviews. We can share notebooks, packages and applications. Uh, we can do so fast. And uh, we can let Julia Hub take care of the hosting, uh, the provisioning, um, the availability. And again, kind of breaking down the different stages of collaboration. So when you're in that whiteboarding phase where you have an idea, but um, not the full infrastructure, you haven't architected the code to really um, be leveraged by someone, or it's not ready to develop that application for the end user but you have a good idea that you want to explore and you need other people's input to make this idea as, as good as it can be. Um, Pluto notebooks are a great way to uh, get those concepts out of your head and into code and, and uh, easily shared with other people. And we're even going to see how uh, they can do so interactively, not just by um, you know, looking at a static, uh, static file. When your code base uh, grows, when you start to work with uh, you know, building out a larger project and you're trying to write some code that's production ready, um, maybe it's gonna be used by other teams. Maybe your team is going to use it to build uh, more sophisticated tooling um, or you need it for an application down the road. Um, Julia packages are a great way to do that. And you've seen a little bit, but um, there's so much that you can learn about the open source uh, package tooling, um, whether it comes to uh, managing them, documenting them, um, hosting them. So all of that open source uh, tooling is available to you, but Julia Hub is really going to take care of um, a lot of the kind of back end uh, 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 di difficulties. So you just register packages. And if you're on a team or an enterprise tier, um, these can be packages that live on your Julia Hub instance, but are not shared uh, to the general repository. So they can be specific to your team um, and your uh, and your use case and your problems that you're solving without sharing with the larger community, if, if that's uh, applicable. And then finally, uh, when we are trying to share our our code and our tools with some end users that is that doesn't include a code interface, but 
a graphical interface, um, uh, a web app, we can deploy to end users with uh, the Genie framework. So if you haven't uh, heard about it, um, I definitely encourage you to get involved. Uh, it's an exciting project with some great contributors. Uh, they're very active and they're very excited about what they're building. Um, it's going to give you a great way to develop anything from a REST API to generating reports to interactive dashboards to full-blown uh, model view controller, uh, you know, full stack at web applications. So um, really the only, um, the only thing stopping you from doing it is just getting started. It's a, it's a really fantastic project um, and it is the preferred way to uh, develop applications on Julia Hub. And um, like I said, it's gonna, it's gonna fulfill any of those requirements you might need. So uh, keep an eye out on our documentation. Uh, we're gonna walk through different tutorials to cover those different use cases, uh, depending on what you may be trying to build. Um, but we're gonna take a look at all, all three of these today. So we're gonna take a look at how we collaborate, um, how we share our initial ideas, how we write some production code and, and share that amongst our teams. Um, and then how we get all of this to an end user, uh, either inside or potentially outside of our, uh, our company. So uh, first I'm going to come over here to this uh, Pluto notebook. So in the same way that I launched the Julia IDE, I can launch uh, a Pluto instance. So you can see that um, because it says connect, I already have one running. So that is this tab here. And this is my notebook. Um, it's very clean. Uh, if, you, if you've seen this before, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you some things you don't know, but it's, it's very powerful. So I, I need to cover it a little bit, but you can very easily generate rich text in these notebooks with, with a little effort. So if you wanna write Markdown, if you wanna write HTML, if you wanna write JavaScript, you can do all of that in here. Um, and then you can execute your Julia code. So there's nothing stopping you from getting this to um, look and convey those ideas that you have in, in the way that you're envisioning. And so things like uh, you know bold text and headers and table of contents, all of this is very easy to do and, uh, and easy to share, right? Um, when I send this to someone else, it's, it's obvious what my ideas uh, are that I'm trying to get across. So um, first thing is, um, this is an overview of what we just covered. Uh, we are looking at the Pluto notebook and um, the idea that I'm sharing here is how easy it is to share ideas. So we have um, this notebook, which is a great way to um, get my concept or my idea into some working code. And we have great facilities to do that uh, because this can generate, uh, again, uh, one of the really uh, one of the rich text formats that I can use as a, is LaTeX or LaTeX. And I can, this is an example of just a matrix with some random symbols in it uh, that I can generate really easily with a uh, package called uh, LaTeXify. And that's an example. This is another example where I just define three functions and I say, I'm going to create a package uh, we really need a package with these functions in them. And so what might, what, what might that look like, right? Um, so this is what the output of these functions is, go is going to look like. Um, if I click on this little uh, icon here, I can show the code. And uh, just uh, really with three lines here, uh, I plotted some anonymous functions uh, for F, G, and H, which I, which I showed above, um, and generated this plot. And so that is my idea, which now I want to get out to others. So I want to, I want to collaborate on this idea. Each one of these notebooks has a visibility setting. And so if I go back to Julia Hub and I click on um, Explore, I can explore packages and I can explore notebooks. So if I explore my notebooks, uh, I can see that I have a folder here called public. And in this folder is, uh, I have two notebooks. Here's the Julia Hub 101 notebook, 
which I've been showing. I have another one there. It's just an example. Uh, if I click on it, I can see a uh, quickly rendered view of what this looks like. Um, and then you also can see this. And, and the reason is because I have this set to public. Um, if I want to manage this notebook or any of the, any of the notebooks in my folder, I can go to compute and then Pluto. And you can see that uh, I can actually edit these notebooks. So if I edit uh, Iris notebook, for example, I can give it different tags. Um, I'm going to cancel out of that for now. Um, when I have the notebook open, I can also change the visibility and change the name. So from here, I can change the, I, I can edit the properties of this notebook. But another thing that I can do is I can share this notebook and uh, actually work interactively um, with my teammates. And Matt is going to help me demonstrate this um, by also having this Pluto notebook open and adjusting the slider here that I have set to a variable, which is going to change the plot that we see. And so you can see there that he is uh, changing the value to seven and that changed the graph uh, to X to the, to the seventh power. And I like things that go to, to 11. So I can go in there, edit it, change it, hide the, the code again. And you know, now we have X to the 11. Exactly. So he has now a really good idea of what I'm trying to share because not only was I able to, um, you know, format my my text and uh, have a have a place to combine um, my ideas in prose as well as my ideas in code, but Matt can get his hands on this and he can say, well, what happens if we want to change the interface to be this, or what happens if I try to do that. Um, we can find out those kind of questions a lot faster than if uh, it's really on me to implement all of this and just make sure that Matt understands my end goal and I understand, uh, you know, Matt's end use case. So all of this is really um, just to start these conversations sooner and to help give these, you know, various team members, various collaborators uh, a, as much opportunity as they can to kind of make these shared uh, discoveries together. So um, again, this is, uh, there's a few different places to, um, to, to manage and view these notebooks. Uh, you can either go to explore and to notebooks or compute and Pluto. Um, please check that out and uh, give it a try. And um, yeah, don't worry if you need to edit it later um, because as I said, you can manage these under compute Pluto. Um, and then this notebook is, is available also. So uh, this link here um, is to a public repository where I'm keeping the uh, Iris notebook and the Julia Hub 101 notebook uh, open, just, just as an example, so that you can see how to include things like uh, admonitions and, uh, you know, with, with custom titles. Um, maybe you're wondering how to uh, get started with sliders and bind these value, uh, bind these values to variables. Um, you know how to how to plot certain things. There's a lot of good uh, material out there, especially from the Pluto project itself. But this is just one example to get you started. So I encourage you to do that. And then the next phase, now that Matt and I are on the same page, we're going to talk about a package that I wrote. So I took I took uh, these ideas. Um, where I, I thought that um, these functions, this functionality was really important. So I, I put these along with a few other things into a package. Now you, you've already seen it from the Julia IDE, but there's another way to view it from Julia Hub. So in the same way that I was able to explore different notebooks, I can also explore different packages. And if I search in the registry where I where I put this package, I can find my package here, and I can also view the documentation. So, from here, I am looking at the docs for this package. Anyone who's worked with Julia packages and anyone who has read the Julia Lang uh, manual 
this looks familiar. Uh, it's the same tooling. And so just in case you're kind of asking, you know, what's the big deal? Um, the reason why this is cool is because if you notice here, when I'm on Julia Hub, I'm actually on um, a subdomain. I'm on my own Julia Hub instance uh, called internal here. And when I go out and I click on this documentation, um, this is hosted on internal as well. And so this means that, again, if you're on a team or an enterprise tier where you're working on some code and maybe it's not ready for public consumption or maybe uh, you can't include it until you kind of uh, you know, make it generic enough to share, um, that doesn't stop you from sharing with your teammates. And that doesn't stop you from sharing amongst uh, you know, different teams in your organization. Uh, if you're all on uh, you know, your company name, .juliahub.com, and you want to register packages and make them available uh, to those uh, to those folks, you can do so. And that makes it really easy for you to uh, collaborate amongst teams, onboard new people. Uh, you get all of the all of the nice tools that you would experience if you were going to uh, write an open source package with documenter um, documenter tools. There's there's so many different um, useful things in here to um, really make sure that the code that you write is is understandable. The, it, its goal is understandable, and uh, its API and its usage is well defined. And uh, yeah, in here you can include uh, code examples. You can write little descriptions. You can um, you know you can do all the great things that are really expected now uh, in a, in a larger software project. It's not enough for just one person to understand it. We have to make sure that. Uh, all of our team can understand and work with these these packages that we're creating. Um, and so this is a way that I was able to share this package. Uh, if I click under contribute and I go to register packages and I go to a particular registry that I want to share to, uh, I just pasted the package URL in. And so if I go to the source code, uh, so this is where this is hosted. Um, again, this is public, so if you want to just take a quick look at this, you can see how it was done. But if I copy this URL and paste it in here, uh, it knows it's from GitHub. And when I hit submit, it's going to register this package. It'll go through the process of adding it to the test registry and then also, um, also building out the documentation so that it's available for other people on my Julia Hub instance, right? So uh, very cool capability. The other thing to note is that this is one of the best uh, places to discover and find information on any Julia package. So uh, you can see here that there are several uh, registries. There's a general registry. We have different registries for the different products that we might offer. Uh, that's you know part of the product offering. Um, but the capabilities to find, um, the capabilities to find specific, uh, elements of the code are really, are done really well here. So just to, just to demonstrate this, um, what's something that we can search? We can search for, uh, HTML. So when I just enter a search term in the top left uh, search bar here. I can either choose to search for packages, notebooks, documentation, symbols, or I can just hit enter and have these selections all here. So if I want to search for a package with HTML in the name, I can do that. I can also choose a different topic. Um, you know, maybe it, this uh, needs to be a web package uh, or, or whatnot. I can choose different licenses, um, but then I can also choose to search and see if any package has this symbol in its code um, or if this string shows up in any of the documentation for these packages. Um, so you can see how maybe it's something that you've seen or you've you've heard or you remember a teammate talking about and you're, uh, it's, you don't remember the package name and you're trying to explore the larger open source or Julia computing uh, ecosystem of packages, this comes in uh, real handy, uh, you know, when you can potentially find some of these answers without having to, to ask for help or a forum or whatnot. So 
that is sharing packages. Uh, just a quick, quick uh, summary. I was able to develop this package right here on the Julia IDE. So this is an application on Julia Hub where I could write my package logic. I could write the different documentation pages. Um, I could push these changes to my GitHub repository. And then when I was, when I was all done, I could register this package on Julia Hub. Um, it was able to then generate the documentation for me, uh, host it so that when um, I want to reconvene with Matt after he took a look at the notebook and he said, you know, hey, um, how did uh, starting that project work? I can share this with him and he can start to see how to use this package and, you know, if all the functions are going to uh, behave like he expects and if they're all included with what he thought we were going to build. Um, but Matt's comfortable looking at code. So in the case where you want to expose some of this to a user through a web application, um, this isn't really going to be as appealing, right? So that is the, the final phase of you know, how we share a lot of what we're building. So what I've actually done is I've shared, I've, uh, excuse me, I've generated a Genie application. Um, it lives here in this repo. Um, we'll share all these links later on so you can take a look. Uh, but much, much of what's in here is actually automatically generated uh, by Genie. It has a couple really useful functions called called a new application to just get a particular resource. It's got it's got functions that take care of a lot of the heavy lifting there. So. In really a short amount of time, I was able to create a web application and I was able to add this application to Julia Hub. So let me show you how I did that. Uh, right here are the two most recent applications that I've used lately, but you see that I also have a link for more. And in here are all the applications that I have access to. Um, you're going to have uh, fewer or more, depending on which products of Julia Hub you are, um, you are subscribed for. So these are the default applications, but I also have my applications. And you can see registered applications. So these are actually other applications that are registered and made public by my teammates. Um, but what we're interested in is the one that I created. So for now, let's just look at my application. I've already started it up in the exact same way that we talked about before. Uh, we get ready to launch a new instance and I can decide what compute resource I wish to run this application on, um, how long I want it to run for. The, uh, the important thing that we include here is a port number. Um, so, you know, Typically default is 8,000. So you just need to enter a port number here so that uh, when it runs, we have a way to access this. Um, so if I close that out and I just connect to the one that I already have open, uh, we can see my application. So uh, these are some interactive plots where, uh, again, I can share with someone, but it's maybe not important that they see the, the code which exposes this functionality. Um, but they need to interact with it. They need to, uh, you know, take screenshots of it, share it with their uh, collaborators, their their teammates, um, to gain new insight. Um, so, Genie has a lot of uh, kind of quick UI elements which are available by the Stipple package. It's also under the Genie framework uh, organization, and so you can. Um, you can create things like that you see here. This is powered by Julia Hub. This is a badge, which uh, is a UI element, which is included from Stipple. These are plot elements, which again are you know, kind of come included. So um, Genie is a, a full stack web framework and Stipple is kind of the batteries included UI elements that allow you to create some nice and polished UIs uh, with by composing these various elements that you might need in your dashboard or in your report or in your form, you know, so forth. 
Uh, so this is this is kind of this is a completing the circle of um, how we collaborate all the way from something that's maybe just an idea to writing some some production code that has tests that's documented um, that we can build upon and then also uh, building and deploying the end user application for someone who doesn't need to see the exposed code um, but needs these insights right so uh, this is how Julia Hub can facilitate each one of these processes. Um, not to not to forget or or minimize what we covered in the beginning. Um, how you also have the ability to computationally burst uh, for different use cases that you need. Um, you can do the same thing from your applications. So all of that together makes this a really really powerful platform. And again, it's. Um, its main focus, its main goal is to just lower the barrier of entry for you to start using Julia and and building great things with it. So with that, I would say um, it's your turn. Hopefully you feel like you're empowered to give some of this a try. Um, you can sign up on an individual uh, individual plan and you can have a go at learning Julia. There's lots of great learning resources if you haven't started, if you already know a little bit then you're probably going to be able to uh, go a long way with what we've covered here in this in this webinar. Um, and the hope is that we, you know, by enabling you, by getting more people on the platform, using Julia, um, sharing their ideas, we can start to accelerate um, scientific discovery, but, you know, really just insights and discovery in any domain. We kind of, we, we, we talk a lot about scientific discovery because that's, um, where a lot of our our power shine through uh, in the from the Julia language, but um, but yeah, anything that you think think you can or want to build, um, we encourage you to give it a try and, and try it on Julia Hub. So with that, I will open up for questions. I'm not sure how we're doing on time, but uh, hopefully we have a few minutes. We do. We do have a few minutes. Um, Matt, have you gotten any questions in you want to share with the group? Sure. So just like a, a basic question is, how do you how do I get started? Right. I don't have uh, starting from scratch. Where do I begin? What's what's my way in through the door? So. You can get started by going to juliahub.com and creating an account. Uh, likely to create an account, you will have to um, put in a credit card number if you want to use some compute, but uh, regardless of, of that, one thing I want to point out here that I kind of forgot about, there is a support link in the bottom right-hand uh, corner of this footer. And if you click on it, it's going to give you a way to generate a support ticket for Julia Hub. And so I would say navigate to Julia Hub and create an account and get started. If you find that something's not behaving the way that you think it should, or you think that uh, you think that um, you know something's not working on uh, in your particular case, then you can submit a ticket, and uh, from there um, we'll reach back out to you and, and hopefully help you resolve it. So um, yeah, Matt, do you do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, that's. That's a great overview. Uh, what about you know using this in a more secure environment, right? Where uh, I'm in a company and and care deeply about the the security of my my IP and you know making things public seems a little scary at that point. Absolutely. Uh, I'm just going to to share the screen once more, um, just in case it kind of. Uh, spurs more more questions, but I think that uh, in that case, you really need to consider and discuss uh, an enterprise plan with uh, our sales team, and that's because the the main difference in the enterprise tier is that you're actually going to be on a, a virtual protected cloud, so you are on dedicated hardware, which uh, you know is is you're the only tenant of that hardware. There's no other teams which are uh, are potentially or you know theoretically um, messing up the hygiene of, of your your cloud environment. 
So that is probably where you're going to feel most at home. Uh, and, and then also we can talk about what Julia computing does um, in trying to, or in, in always uh, keeping up on our security uh, uh, certifications as well. So we are SOC 2 compliant and um, some other pedigrees that I probably uh, should have in my back pocket. But uh, at this time, I would, I would recommend that you reach out to sales and, uh, and we'll discuss what is important to you now and you know whether or not Julie Hub supports that. Um, we have addressed many of these issues because we do have many enterprise users who work in this kind of environment. So um, going back to our products, uh, we do a lot of work in the pharmaceutical industry um, and uh, data governance and, and privacy and security is paramount. So a lot of these kinds of things have, have been addressed um, and our platform has had to be compliant with those regulations. Um, so we keep that up to date, but you know, it's, it's, it's an ongoing battle. So it's something that we are constantly um, trying to improve and just making sure that uh, we take that seriously as a, uh, a company culture and, um, and yeah, make sure that we have that conversation with you if that is deeply important so that you understand exactly what we offer and exactly what kind of protection uh, that we can, we can offer you for your IP. Okay, well, since we're running out of time, I'm going to thank you, Jacob, and thank you, Matt, for doing that presentation. And I wanna thank everyone who joined us today for this webinar. Um, we'll be sending a follow-up email that will include the links that were shared in the chat, as well as a link so you can view the recording if there are things you wanna see. Um, and of course, you can always reach out to us in one of the ways that Jacob showed, either through support or at, through sales at juliacomputing.com to answer additional questions. I'd also encourage you to keep an eye out for our upcoming July webinars, which will include an introduction to Julia Sim presented by um, the creator and lead developer, Chris Rakakis, and our own Matt Bowman will take this Julia Hub info to the next level with large scale parallel data analysis. So keep an eye on your inboxes for, for inf more information on those or feel free to reach out and we can send you a link to them um, after this. Thank you everyone for attending and we very much appreciate you joining us today. All right, thank you everyone. Bye.